Flosstube. It's Jen from Jen Stitching Niche. I'm back for an update video. Today is Sunday, February 6th. It's been all about two months since my last video. So we are in Colorado, so I'm in our new place for now. Um, we are renting a place in Littleton, and this is my shop slash craft area that I'm sharing with Hobby, who's got an office space over there. So he works from home as well. Um, it's been an adventure and we love it. We are super happy that we are in Colorado. Uh, we've experienced some snow, quite a bit of snow for us. Um, actually had to drive home from work in the snow the other day. I'm working at Fort Collins, which is about an hour and 15 minute drive. And I teach two classes back to back. And one of those classes ends at eight o'clock at night. And I had to drive back in the snow. It was frustrating, but I did it. Um, luckily, the people in Colorado drive better than you would expect compared to what I'm used to in the Mississippi, Louisiana area. Everybody drives reasonably and not a lot of lane shifting, at least in the bad weather. So that was nice. Um, literally could not see the lane. So I just got behind the person in front of me and if they were in a lane, I was in a lane. Um, I don't know it's it's uh, interesting so we've been out to several uh, parks in the area to do some hiking Sally loves that and I'll put some pictures in of Sally on her hikes she is enjoying getting out and exploring and all the new smells so she is a very strong little Boston Terrier and a lot of times we're just being pulled down the little hiking trails but we've enjoyed that. And it's just fun, kind of just two people living together again after 27 years of being parents. Um, both boys, I miss them terribly, but they are doing great. Um, Nicholas is in his second semester of graduate school. Patrick is in his fourth or third um, semester of graduate school. Both of them are working, both of them are doing well. I talk to them pretty much at least once a week um, if not, I text them, and so they're doing great. Um, other than that, it's been a pretty good beginning of the year. We sold our house and signed papers on the 30, 30th. I think that was right. Maybe it was the 29th. Anyway, we got up and left on January 1st. So we spent the night in my at my sister's house and um, literally got up on the 1st and started our way to Colorado. It took us two and a half days to drive. Um, the first night was pretty bad because it was through Louisiana in really rainy, windy um, weather and we were driving a big truck. So, But we made it. All of our stuff is either here or in storage or at Goodwill because we've been carrying a lot of stuff to Goodwill. But um, you can see I've got some of my shop stuff set up. So my shop has been open since I think January 5th. And um, some weird things happened. Etsy shut my, my shop down for a full day for no explanation. When I tried to finally got a hold of someone, they're like, it's open. I'm like, it's not open. And then they're like, oh, well, it's open now. So I don't know what that was about. But it did stimulate the kind of... Um, urge to separate from Etsy a little bit so I am opening my own website um, that should be live hopefully by the middle of February and I'll give you more information about that later but I have been doing a lot of stitching for a while I wasn't able to stitch because I packed up some of my whips and I couldn't get to them um, they were in one of the pods I thought I'd put them in the the truck but apparently I didn't so I was a little you know stressed about that but um, I've got quite a bit of stitching to share with you so I don't have any FFOs but I've got some a couple of finishes and lots and lots of plans of course I'm always planning so I will get to that and I'll show you that information or those projects Okay, so FFOs. I don't have any FFOs, but what I have been working on, I want to finish this set of charts, the Love Notes by Brenda Gervais. So I mentioned this in my last video. I am stitching these on, I think it's 
Brenda's Brew. I'm not sure, but it's an R&R &R fabric. I think it's 40 count, and I finished one of them. So if I only finish this one this year, I'll be okay. But isn't that adorable? That little cupid. And I want to display them similar to the way Brenda is displaying these types of little um, collections. Um, she showed this at, or she had it on display at the retreat back in October. So I went to Hobby Lobby and I found this little tray and then I'm buying these little paper mache letters and painting them. I've still got to age these. I need to put some of that wax on them and then put the pillows in there. So it's L-U-V if you can't see that. Um, I just bought the letters at Hobby Lobby and then I'm using the Americana. I think I picked this up at Michael's, Santa Red. And to match the pink that Brenda's using, I'm using Melon. Can you see that? Americana paint. So I'll just age this a little bit, finish these as pillows and put them in here with it or around it. And I'll have a little, I wanna say Halloween because my sister Bridget has started that. She got stuck on calling Valentine's Day Halloween. And now I do it. Thank you, Bridget but I wanna have a little Valentine display next week. That's one thing that I'm getting, we are still unpacking. You can see boxes here. My husband just put in a bookshelf in this closet. This is a little hallway to the entrance of our apartment. And so he's got this whole area is, clear, is full of boxes. This closet behind me, there's two shelves in it and it's all full of crafting stuff of Jennifer. So, and some shop stuff. This is most of the charts. You can't see there's a whole nother shelf up there. That up there is finishing supplies and a basket of wool. Mm, there's a lot of good stuff in there. Anyway, so that is one of my processing towards FFO. Last night, I finished the, no, night before last, I finished the last of the Jack-O-Lantern Jubilee set. So I started this back in the fall and I finished Ghosts and Goblins but you can barely see the ghost, but he's cute. And this was the other one that I had not finished. Ooh, that little bow is in his face. I'll have to tack that down when I do the finishing, make these into pillows. So I'm gonna do the same thing that Brenda has with the letters, I mean with the stars. So I bought the stars and I actually bought the boo. Here you go, you can see that right there. So I've got that going to just copy Brenda. And if you're not familiar with the other ones, they're all adorable. So there's that. And another witch that's so cute. Trick or treat. And then Boo, the two cats. So I'm going to finish all of those and do a similar display. And that again is Jack-O-Lantern Jubilee from Brenda Gervais. Okay, so what I've currently been working on, um, actually I've been working on quite a few things because I joined the Magical Stitches again. I was involved in it when we did the Harry Potter and super loved that. And then I tried to keep up with it when they were doing the second series, I forget, something with Percy, I don't remember. But this time, because we've moved and I feel like I have more free time, I don't. Days pass really fast in Colorado. Um, I decided I was going to do the Magical Stitches, and it's based on the series of books. I forget the name of the author, but she, the first one is The Quick and the Thread, and she does, um, it's based on a person, you know, the character has a cross-stitch shop. Anyway, I'm doing that series, and um, I've got a lot accomplished because of that. So one of the things that I worked on to meet the different prompts, and I'm not gonna go through all the prompts, was this Splendor of Florals, which is my oldest whip. It is a huge piece that I got out of a magazine. These were published, I think, when is it? I've got all of them in here pulled out. 2010, and during that time period, and they came out one or two a month over the course of the year. And I quickly stitched the, this one years ago. And then I think in 2020, I finished 
the rows. And then my next thing, I was just going to start doing them one a month. And then that fell apart. But this month, I worked on the morning glories. And though I haven't finished the block, I have come a long way. So you can see this is on 32 count, I think antique white. But before this year, I just had the one flower done and a couple of the leaves. So I worked on finishing up this leaf and then a lot of work on this flower and putting in the borders. So that's where I am. I'll try to find this for you. And I even got some back stitching in because one of the challenges is a DMC. You have to do 100 stitches of in a particular DMC, but you have to do them in the order they were called. And this was one of those. So, so I'm working on that. And I will pull this out. There's a, another challenge this month with something with florals. So I'm going to work on that. I figure, you know, better than not working on it. Eventually I'll maybe finish this one. And the other one that featured a lot in my January Magical Stitches, this is actually the one I'm using for the year challenge. The monthly retreat, I guess I should say. And this is a Praiseworthy Stitches, Praiseworthy, Praiseworthy Stitches, one of their haunted houses. And this is Croaking Toad Manor. So before this year started, I had this part done. Just a little bit above the pond and then this much done. And I have finished all the way over to here, the first set of pages, thanks to Magical Stitches. So that's my progress. Isn't that adorable? So lots and lots and lots of little tiny parts. I haven't put didn't I haven't put the eyes on any of the people and I haven't done any of the back stitching. But lots of little trick or treaters. And I in there there are some over one frogs. Let's see if I can find one. Right there in that pond are a bunch of over one frogs. But I'm getting them done thanks to magical stitches. So, oops. I think I just dropped the needle. Yep. Hold on one second. I guess that's why we should use needle minders. But that will come out probably this next weekend doing some magical stitches. Okay, so that is another whip that has had a lot of progress. And then my other major whip I've been working on is the Snowball by Brenda Gervais. So this is another one of those sets of smalls. I have completed there's seven parts in this and I think I've completed five so let's see I've done this one let it snow I need to add some buttons to that family portrait <laughs> that cute and then the snow globe so I finished four I'm working on the photo booth fun so I worked on that last night while we watched Book of Boba Fett. Oh. So. And I have two more after that to complete. So I am have to do the Winter Wonderland. And I don't know if I'm going to do that one. I'll decide. And then the last one is just this little gingerbread house that is super cute. Snowy Chalet. And that one. So if I work hard, I can get these done this, um, maybe this weekend after I finish this I have to do some paperwork for my taxes and then I'm going to go cross stitch. Another challenge group that I'm participating in this year is WIPGO. So I made my WIPGO board and on January the two that were called were October from Cricut Collection and Rabbit Patch by is it Hand, Heart, Heart and Hand? I think that's who it is. So October my goal was to spend five days on this one. Because I struggle with stitching on this one. And it's... I got over the struggle. I'll show you what the issue was when I show you the progress. So I just wanted to work five days on this. And I did. And I got 
When I started, I had just the O done without a lot of the leaves. So I finished the O, worked on the C, and started the T. And this is stitched on 32 count Anubis from Under the Sea Fabrics, Leslie. And I love it. It does show up a little better in person, but it's really cute. And that got me happier about working on this one. The struggle is at first that O did not look great on this fabric, but once I started adding all the other parts, it does look better. My goal for the year for October is to finish half of it. So I'm close to finishing half of that. Um, and the whip go made a big difference in that progress. The other one called for January was Rabbit Patch by Heart and Hand. And my goal was to finish this. Well, I had a good amount done on this, on the border. But when I pulled it out, I realized why I had not finished it is the, the color. I'm using DMC if I don't have the actual color um, of Fancy Floss. And the DMC that was suggested was too light. It wasn't showing up. So I changed the color, pulled everything out, and did not finish it, which was my goal. But I got that much done. So I'll keep working on it. I just think this is a cute one. A couple of weekends and I should have that finished. And I'm hoping to finish it similar to this pillow finish. Oops. I've got a carrot fabric, not this one, but similar to it that I can use. Now, continuing with WhipGo, this month my WhipGo um, projects are Miss Baxter's House by Stacy Nash, which is this cutie. It's Houses of Berries, Chapel Road, Miss Baxter's House. And I worked on this last night for one of my um, Magical Stitches goals. But that's my progress. This is on a 32 count Lakeside Linens, I believe. Or it may just be a Swigert. But so I finished one of those red flowers and then I started on the house. My problem was is I haven't pulled the threads for it except for two special or two substitutions from Victorian Motto and an, um, this is a called L.A. Hayes. It's a old Gentle Arts limited edition. So you got to be careful with that one that I don't run out. So that's my progress and my plan is to spend a good five days on that. This one day that I did yesterday is not going to count. And my other call for WhipGo this month is another Stacy Nash, and that is, oh, I just tore the picture off the front, Halloween at Hollyberry Farm. And I just have a tiny bit done on the border. This is on a 36 count, I think this is cedar plank from Lakeside Linen. So my goal on this is to put five days in it. So that is some of my plans for February. Another plan is to work on Autumn at Hawk Run Hollow. This one I struggle with so much, and I know why I struggle with it now. Last night I was putting in, I had to do another Magical Stitches. There's all prompts and it's just fun, but I had to put 100 stitches in a project that had squares, four squares. So this has more than four, but I used it anyway. And the thing is, is the chart does not have the 10, um, 10 block demarcation easily seen. When you first look at it, you can't see the 10 block mark. So it's a lot harder to count, in my opinion. But I worked on it anyway. I'm on the second block. And that is where I am. And I have a yearly goal for this. I think I, my goal is to do six blocks. But I just put in these two doors and the rest of this side of the house, of the barn. So I don't know why I struggle with this one so much, but I do. Okay, I also want to talk a little bit more about my plan. So I showed this in my last video. This is the TUUL tool um, notebook, and I love this thing. I think I have found my ultimate notebook planner 
thing. So I'm using Jen Lee's um, 24 Hours of Cross Stitch, the, that as my major planner. So I've got all of my goals for the year. Just love her stuff. But one of the things I'm doing, wait, let me find this, because I was watching um, Carolyn Zook, who I love to watch her videos. She's very organized, which I love that. And she mentioned that she had yearly goals for all of her whips. I'm like, I love that idea. So I went and I listed my whips. At this point, I have 29 whips. I started 2020 with 29 whips. And then I just went down and I determined what my goal was for each one, whether it's fully finishing it or just a number of pages. Like the Croaking Toad Manor, I started the year with the goal of finishing three pages. I think there are 15 or 12 pages. And I finished three and will probably finish more because I'm using that for my monthly retreat challenge or the monthly challenge in the Magical Stitches. So I'm getting a lot of stitching in. Of course, once I finish the page that I'm working on now, then we get into that big house. Mm. That's a lot of stitching. But, you know, this way, I'm not trying to finish everything. And it gives me room to start some new stuff. Because I have plans of starting, which I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. So, so yeah. Um, last video, I said one of my main plans was to start the... Um, what is it? Tender Heart series by Blackbird Design. This is the one that I couldn't find. So I haven't started it yet, but I have my fabric. I'm going to pull my threads and I'm going to start it probably, if not today, tomorrow. So I know I'm supposed to be stitching this with um, someone, but sorry. I'll start it maybe tomorrow. Okay. Um, and I also want to start the um, Jeanette Douglas is doing a tiny bouquet series. I did start it. I don't know where I put it, but I did start the January and I'm loving that. And I also said I was going to do the magical, excuse me, Sally's right behind me. One of the, um, sows for the year. I think it was linen and threads. I'm not doing that. It's too big and I've got too many big projects in play. And when I looked at it, I'm like, that's beautiful, but I'm not doing that. So, all right, so what else have I been up to? A lot of organizing and cleaning and deciding on if these are things that I really want. So I have gone through all of my charts and organized them yet again. And um, I don't have any that are like super out of print that people would want. Um, if I did, I would have sent those to people who have asked about them. But a lot of things I've got that are just you know, some charts that I've accumulated over the year, I just donated it to Goodwill. So we're in Littleton. If you're interested, I donated a whole bunch of craft stuff to the Goodwill in Littleton. Um, you might find some great things there. Um, and then I've also started organizing my quilting. So I'm going to work on these little quilt kits that I've gotten over the years. This is the one that I started cutting out um, about a week ago and I'm going to try to work on that. We don't have a dining room table in our apartment. We don't have room. So that since we have two dining room tables in storage right now, but um, we do have a large patio table. And I told my husband, I said, I can do these and put them out on the patio table because it's covered and it won't be messed up or anything. So that may be something I work on this week. And just getting an assessment of everything we've got, realizing that I could craft for the rest of my life and never buy another piece of crafting material. It's a little eye-opening, but I've enjoyed going through all of the stuff and I've enjoyed looking at and planning because I love to plan. So, but um, I do need to determine who our winners of our giveaway were last month, our last um, video. So let me pause and I'll go and pull those and tell you who the winners are. Okay, so the winners from my last um, video's giveaway, so I had six different items and people just commented and I went to the random comment picker. And so the first one was the B Company. These were pro, um, kits and charts out of the um, advent calendar from Kid and Stitcher. So, Number one is Pamela Berenz-Rowan. 
So I'll have my email in the um, drop down box below. Just email me and tell me what your address is. Number two was a token of friendship by Scarlet Letter. And this went to Deb Myers. Number three was the Heartstring Samplery Yield Noel. And this went to Cheryl Brumbaugh. Number four was the Hands to Work. And this goes to Lynette Bartell. Number five was the Wooly Essentials, excuse me, Winter Essentials, and it went to Wooly Girl from Mobile because we need those Winter Essentials down in Gulf Coast. And then the last one was the Blue Flower Winter Quail, and this went to Grant Sigsworth, but Judy is who made the comment, so just making sure. Um, I had lots of great comments last video. Thank you very much. Lots of well wishes and advice for moving from a very humid, sweltering heat Gulf Coast area to the kind of dry, cooler weather of Colorado. Um, and we're adjusting. I'm, I'm enjoying it. We, we are super happy where we are. Um, if my sons were here, it would make it, you know, 300% better. But thank you all for the very kind comments and just lots of well wishes. It's, a, it's good to have that kind of support from um, all of you as we made this big change. So um, absolutely no regrets. My husband's always asking, are you sad? I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not homesick. I'm not sad. I'm not missing um, Mississippi, I'm not missing my old job. Um, my new job, yeah, you know, it's okay. The students are amazing. They're, I have two classes, amazing students, love the kind of setup of how we're teaching. It's a satellite campus and there's not a lot of organization in my opinion. Um, I feel kind of sorry for the administrative staff because they're the ones that carry a lot of the burden of getting everything done. And there are not that many of them to handle what needs to be done. But um, I don't like to drive either. So hopefully I'll find something closer to where we are here in Littleton. I am gonna do giveaways for this video as well and I have five different charts. These are primarily charts that are from my shop um, that I don't want to list. They were didn't get listed for some reason and I just don't want to add them back to my um, inventory because either they're not available or I'm not, you know most of it's because it's not available. So number one is um, a Bent Creek kit. It's Pumpkin of Leaves and it's the full kit. So this is on, I think it's like an 18 count linen with pearl cottons. So cute. I think that came out of my stash actually. I'm also downsizing on my own stash. So um, number two is the 2020 Collector's Heart from Heart and Hand. So this is two separate pieces. So the heart and this frame piece. So you get all of the um, embellishments and the fabric, not the threads. So I stitched that last year. It's really fun, really cute. Now these next two are because you can't find these and I didn't realize I still had them until I was cleaning things out. So some people are going to be very excited about this. So number three is Bird in Hand by Blackbird Design. This is one of the um, Rewards of Merit charts that I don't think are available anymore. So that's number three. Number four is another reward of merit from um, Blackbird Design. It's down in the valley. And number five is from Needlework Press. It is the Little Busy Bee. And there's a little mark, I think. Yeah, right here. There's a little tear in the chart. So. so that's number five. So if you're interested in any of these, just make a comment. Do not say anything about giveaway, I hope I win, anything that sh that's going to indicate that this is a giveaway. So win, um, giveaway, anything like that. Just a regular comment and then the numbers of the items that you're interested in. And you can enter all five if you want to. I'll pull one winner for each. One person can't win more than one of the items. but. Um, 
you know, that's always fun to see who, what the comments are and see what people are interested in. So that's for the next video. Okay, so I think I have shared most of my stitching plans or progress with you. It's a little kind of scattered, but um, I don't know, I guess it's a new environment and I'm a little off kilter of how to do the videos. But I do want to just say thank you to everyone that subscribes and continues to come back and watch my videos even though it can be, you know, a long time between the videos. I appreciate your support. Um, if you're new, I've got 60 something videos and I have a lot of whips so if you want to go back and look at some of the things I've stitched before it's kind of interesting. I'm kind of all over the place. Um, you can see I'm starting to hang up some of my projects and that's the other thing is trying to figure out what I'm going to do with all my frame pieces. So these are different Halloweens. This is a Blackbird design. I think that one's Halloween Eve or something. That's the um, which is hollow by Primitive Needle. That's not available anymore. This is uh, Halloween Rules by Lizzie Kate, and that's Casting the Spell by Blackbird Design. But my plan is to fill up this area, and then after that door, that's my husband's space, up to like right here, and then I've got a whole wall here and some wall space over there. So I have space for everything. And again, this mess up here, that's really mainly my fin finishing stuff that I need to I've got plans, big plans. So um, the shop is going well. Um, I got a big order of fabric in from Yarn Tree and I've sold a lot of that. I'm expecting an order from Fox and Rabbit next week. Hopefully that will come in. And then hopefully some R&R &R fabrics are coming in. And then I'm still waiting for my picture this plus. I know those uh, that they are working very hard, but hopefully that will be in soon. Um, I'm still doing, as long as I'm with Etsy, I'm doing free shipping if you um, spend $35 or more, and then um, just getting the new stuff in. It's a little slower here from Hoffman, but it's not necessarily Hoffman's fault, it's the weather. So we've had a couple of shipments delayed, but I'm getting things up and going as quickly as possible. I just got in the um, new charts from Priscilla and Chelsea, and this may be a start trying to decide. I love carrots. I've talked about that on a previous video. And I think if I stitch it, I'm just going to stitch to here and then bring this gingham border up underneath the house. But I have a green fabric that this would look really cute on. I don't know. I've got to decide. And I love the carrot cake one, which I've already put it up with the carrot cake one as well. The other series I'm working on, guys, I know you've seen this one the fall on the farm. So this is the second one. I've got the first one stitched. I'm going to work on the second one in February. And then Vana, Vana posted her new border to go with it. Go and take out the border from the first one and then add Vana's border. If you haven't seen Vana's border, go to Twisted Stitcher on just Google Twist, Twisted Stitcher and you'll get her blog and see what she has planned. I mean, she's so creative. Just love what she's doing. Um, I guess that's everything. You know, visit my shop if you're interested. Um, tell me what you're going to be stitching in February. Um, I want to do some more sal. So I'm supposed to be saling this with a couple of people. Um, sorry, I haven't started it, but I'm planning to start this soon. I don't know. That's the first one, but I may start the second one in the series. That's more up my alley. But, but I hope everybody's staying warm, getting a lot of stitching time. Um, I don't know what I would do without watching my floss tube. I've watched, you know, everybody, every, I've got to start commenting. And um, that's probably one of the, my New Year's resolutions that I'll make now in February is that I'm going to start commenting on, on videos as I'm watching them. For the first three weeks we were here, we didn't have a couch. Our living room space was filled with boxes. So I sat on the bed and watched my on my computer, which I should have been making comments at that point. But when we finally got a couch, oh, Sally and I are so much happier. We can watch Floss Tube on the big screen. Um, I guess that's everything. I hope everybody has a great February. Uh, maybe, maybe I can get into a regular uh, um, recording schedule. We'll see. 
Um, I would love to record once a week, but we'll see how that goes. Um, and enjoy your week. Hope to see you soon.